Hey guys, Pat Tivoli here, teaming up with Griffith College to share some ideas around lifelong learning and goal setting. So today I wanted to start by talking about goal setting, which to me is really about narrowing the focus and learning to narrow the focus. We live in a world where we're constantly looking outside of ourselves and there's so much going on between social media, mass media, our work life, our family life. We've got more commitments than we've ever had before, but the same amount of time. So we've still got 24 hours in the day. And we've got more and more happening all the time, more and more seemingly to do and that can be overwhelming that can be stressful that can leave us feeling like we're just keeping our head above water it can leave us feeling like we're on a treadmill but not really going anywhere and the art of goal setting really allows us to narrow the focus and place our attention and the energy that we have which is limited into the things that really matter to us okay so if you think about a car journey you wouldn't get into a car and not know the destination where you're going to go because you're going to be using fuel, you know, you're going to be wasting money on fuel, you're going to be using energy, you're going to be using time, uh, but not getting anywhere. And oftentimes we can live our lives in this way. So we get up in the morning, we're not sure what we want to get done in the day, we're kind of going through the motions, we feel unfulfilled at the end of the day because we didn't really move forward. Again, the art of goal setting really starts to change all of these things. It gives you fulfillment, it gives you purpose, it gives you direction, it leaves you feeling like you're actually making progress every day and the actions that you're taking will build confidence. So a lot of people want to build confidence. I believe that comes through setting a goal working backward to figure out what it is you need to get there and then taking a consistent daily action to move you in that direction. So again, really about narrowing the focus from looking at everything that's going on to deciding the things that matter the most to you. I often tell people you can do anything in life, but you can't do everything. And so many of us try to do everything. So we're people pleasing and we're trying to, you know, do a million different things rather than really committing ourselves to a certain number of goals in different areas of life. It all starts with self-awareness. I think this is something that I've learned over time is that I used to run seminars for goal setting and in those seminars, I'd encourage people to write down their goals. But generally what would happen in the room was that people would look around them and try to get validation and ideas and approval from other people in the room as to what they should write down. And I think this is kind of what happens to us all. We look outward again and we think about what should I do? What are the things that other people are doing? What is success? And we're looking at other people's versions of success. We're looking at society's versions of success. And this is where we get caught, I think, because we're chasing goals that aren't really for us. They're not gonna make us happy. We're chasing goals that are either for validation from other people or approval from other people, whether it's a parent or it's a spouse or it's a family member or a friend or society in general. We're not doing things truly for ourselves. So the art of goal setting starts with taking time for you, taking time and space, okay? Now at my seminars, I explain the principles, but I encourage people to take that time. Uh, spend a day by yourself every couple of months where you've got pen and paper and you turn off technology and you're just alone thinking about what's currently working in your life, what's maybe not working as well, and where would you like to go over the next 12 months? And taking this time allows you to kind of escape what's going on outside and look inside and really start to find goals that will leave you feeling fulfilled. What happens is when we chase other people's goals, when we chase goals for approval or validation or love or acceptance or any of these things, is maybe we'll eventually get there. We'll have to slog to get to that goal. Maybe we'll achieve it, but oftentimes we're left feeling unfulfilled. It's a bit like climbing to the top of a mountain and looking out and saying, is this all there is? That's what happens when we chase other people's goals. When we get connected to what our goals are, again, through taking time and space, pen and paper, and just taking time away and, and looking inward rather than outward, when we go after those goals, we tend to enjoy the journey more. We tend to be so much more fulfilled when we get there and we get there quicker because we're doing something that energizes us. So a goal should really energize you. Oftentimes people tell themselves when they get to the goal, then they'll be happy, then they'll be confident, then they'll feel successful, then they'll feel secure. And that's a bit of an illusion in a sense because you're telling yourself that three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, 12 months from now, you'll feel all these things. You know, a great goal that's really gonna fulfill you, really gonna energize you, should make you start feeling those feelings from the get-go. Okay, so if I'm aiming to do a degree or a certification or a diploma and I'm looking at an area that I'm really interested in and I'm fulfilled by the idea of going toward this goal, I should be able to enjoy the process, okay? So it's not about when I get there, then I'll be happy and I'll feel confident. I should be enjoy, you know, starting to feel those things straight away. So that's what a real goal will do for you. So again, it's about narrowing the focus. It's about, think about the internal GPS. So again, I don't get in the car and drive around aimlessly for hours. 
uh, using fuel, using time, using energy with no destination in mind because that wouldn't make sense. So I shouldn't live my life in that way. I shouldn't run around the place. I shouldn't be a busy fool. I shouldn't be trying to people please and do everything for everyone, but not feel like I'm getting anywhere. Suddenly when I get in the car and I've got a destination in mind for the GPS, I don't need a full game plan as to how I'm gonna get there. I just need to take the next step. So you think about that, you get into the car, it says drive 100 meters. And I take that first step and then it says turn left. And I take that step and I've got direction now. I'm using the same amount of energy, same amount of time, same amount of money, but I've got direction. And it's the same for ourselves. You know, if I get up in the morning and I've got no clarity as to where I'm trying to go, no clarity around my goals, then I'm using energy, I'm using time, I'm probably working hard, but not feeling like I'm moving forward versus having a couple of goals. I get up in the morning, I know that maybe I don't have the full game plan, but I know today I'm gonna to do this, this, and this. That moves me forward, which gives me confidence, and I build upon that. So I'd encourage you, whether it's even taking an hour, taking half a day, ideally taking a day, uh, getting pen and paper, and just writing down where you are now, where you'd like to go, and start to put together a game plan to take you towards your goals.